It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Tuesday, April 4th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content that is excited to talk all things phantoms today, including the Ronnie Adderd call up. Yeah, I'm not if I'm excited about that. Well, I am. So we're going to talk about it on today's show. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on Twitter at Sportsology. Thanks for making us your first listen every day. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Flyers. That is where we post about our latest episodes and Flyers news. You can also email the show at LockedOnFlyers at Gmail. We will be having a mailbag tomorrow, so send us in those questions. You can also comment over on YouTube where we are as well here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Russ, so we got news yesterday that Ronnie Adderd was called up to the Flyers. This is their second to last the non-emergency call up, uh, if I'm counting correctly. And I think this is something that would have happened like a week and a half ago if Ronnie Adder didn't get sick and miss, uh, not this past weekend, but the week before he missed the games because of illness. And I'm guessing it would have come then. Most likely. Um, I'm okay if it's a quick call up. If he is going to miss time from the Phantoms, then I am not okay. I'm happy he's getting another look. Don't get me wrong. But I think the Phantoms really need the help. They're they're on the edge. They are. Uh, he's been the top defensive scorer for the Phantoms this season. We've talked about that uh, the last month or so. And uh, Ronnie is also sixth amongst AHL rookie defensemen this season. So that's not too shabby. He's got 30 points in 64 games. No, it's really good. It's been a really good season for him. Still developing, still not sure if he's an NHLer yet, but he's, he's much closer. Yeah, and I think getting a couple games in uh, once against a, an eliminated team and once against a playoff bound team, at least I think that's a good combination of games. Now, hopefully he goes back to the Phantoms for their games next weekend, but obviously we don't know how long the call up is going to be for and with travel and everything. Uh, it, it might be dicey to get back for that Friday game, but he should be able to at least get back for the Saturday game this weekend. Yeah. I have a feeling the Friday game is going to be uh, not happening. And yeah, I mean, it's a part of it. I mean, this is all about how you plan it, though. So he could play Friday. There's reason. There's really no reason he can't. But we'll see. We'll wait and see how that all plays out. Yeah, and as far as his more recent play, um, like we said, he was out sick the week before. But this weekend, uh, he had an, a, a really great feed to Bobby Brink for the game-winning goal on Friday. Um, plus like a really smart breakout on the play that led to the empty net goal to seal that one for Lehigh Valley. And so, you know, I, I think this is a good time for him to get called up and to just see how he can integrate with the Flyers right now. Yeah, I mean, if he's still a little behind pace wise, then it'll be a good time for the coaches to say, listen, this off summer, off season, if you want to really have a chance to make it with the team, you're really going to have to break it as far as um, your skating and, and who you're skating with and who your coach is so in the off season. So that, that could be a big thing for him. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, sort of transitioning to talk about the Phantoms overall. Uh, I think one of the reasons, well, Zamula already got a call up, right? Um, but so it wasn't likely that he would get called up again in this scenario, but he was out Saturday and Sunday this week. Uh, he left the game on Friday sometime in the second period and didn't return 
So hopefully it's not too serious. I uh, haven't heard any more details uh, as of right now on what's going on with him, but um, hopefully he'll be able to rejoin the team for the playoffs, crossing my fingers that they make it there. Uh, the magic number is now seven. We're getting getting closer, Russ. It's, yep. uh, I, I feel it, I'm feeling much better now than I was maybe two weeks ago. Yeah, I, I agree with that, but it does it's it, it is roller coaster us. A little bit. Uh, so they won two of three games this past week. Uh, they won against Wilkesbury Scranton four to two on Friday, then lost five to one on Saturday against Hartford and. That was an interesting game, how that one played out. We'll get into it. Uh, and then Sunday, they won 3-2 to two at Bridgeport. And I think that uh, for the most part, they are playing really well. That game against Hartford uh, was just rough defensively at the end of the game. Uh, the first period goal that Hartford got was very fluky. There was a bounce off an official uh, that led to the play sequence, and you just can't really put a lot of that one on them. Right. Um, but they just kind of collapsed in the third period, which is not good. Don't get me wrong. But I think, uh, you know, of the weekend, they really only had that one bad period of hockey. It wasn't even a full period. It was like 12 minutes of hockey that just they gave up like goal after goal, like three goals. Um that didn't look great, but uh, I, th I think overall they played real solid hockey this weekend. Um, and then we saw more of Emil Andre. Want to get into that for sure? Yeah, I mean, I heard murmurs of the Hartford game uh, when I was waiting for Torts to. Was it Torts? Was it Larson? Was, uh, not Larson Shaw uh, to come out and talk. I think that's because there, I heard people saying, "Oh, it's it's Nolan Mayer in that." Like, oh. That's why they lost. And I don't think people realize he's mm -hmm. a pretty good goalie, but they don't get to see him. And so I was glad that he got redemption because I didn't think it was fair to hang it on him. And I'm not saying anybody was, but I'm just saying when you're not watching the game and you see who was in that, it was being talked about a little bit. Yeah, I think that was a full team collapse. Yeah. I mean, maybe he could have saved one of them. But at that point, it wasn't going to make a big enough difference. Uh, it was just a team defensive collapse, in right. my opinion, for, for that one. Um, yeah, Emil Andre, though, uh, he got his first AHL goal. Yeah, I saw that. That was great. Yeah, and he was the only goal scorer in that 5-1 to one loss. But it was such a great shot. Um, Tyson Forster did a drop pass in, into the slot. And Andre just picked it up and ripped it in and yep. kind of pinged off the crossbar down and in. Uh, really love that. Yeah, I mean, he's got that ability. That's what I'm saying. He He's a future power play guy. I don't know if a lot of Flyers fans were viewing him as that, and they were probably counting on Cam York. But I'm telling you, Andre's better on the power play as a shooter than Cam York is. Yeah, I, I mean, I can see why that could be true. You know, I, I think that, you know, as far as North American play, need a little bit more evidence of that. But I, but I think based on his style of play and, and what he was doing out there, um, he just has a lot more confidence in his playmaking than yep. uh, Cam York does right now. Yeah, that's just that's a fact. So uh, I do think that uh, your point about Nolan Meyer was great uh about coming back in on Sunday obviously with Sam Merson playing in Pittsburgh uh Nolan had to step up a little bit he had a point blank stop on uh Bargero at the end of the game to hold on to that win uh just came up big uh, a lot in his games yeah he's a good positional goalie he's athletic he can make the big save I've liked what I've seen out of him this year I'd like them to retain him. I think there's a, a future with him. Yeah, I, I think so too. And uh, I do want to get more into the weekend, including our regular check-in with their special teams. And uh, I might have some good things to say about it, Russ. Yeah, that's okay. That's good news. All right. We will do that coming up next. Buying tickets to your favorite sports events shouldn't be stressful. Game time's the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all 
the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you could stop stressing over the tickets and start getting hyped for the fun you'll have. My favorite part of Game Time app is that it's great for getting notified about last-minute ticket deals and flash deals. Plus, you can get views from your seats. The Game Time guarantees mean the game time guarantee means you will get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less game time will credit you 110 percent of the difference also tickets are sent directly to your phone so you never have to dig through your email snag the tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account and use the code locked on nhl for your 20 dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So continuing our Phantoms Tuesday report, uh, I do want to get into those special teams stats and uh, got to talk about the PK. Real solid. Uh, only let in one power play goal for the weekend three games. And I think especially in that game on Saturday where, you know, they, they let up late in the game, that was really like a lot of that was a five on five. Like their PK looked really, really good. Um, and Sunday did it again in what was a really huge game for them. And it was super important. Yeah, it's good that the PK is working somewhere in the organization. And it's nice to see that, you know, the Phantoms have not going at the right time. Like they're getting it going mm -hmm. at the right time. That's good for them. Yeah. And, you know, part of the reason why, again, they lost that game is that they weren't able to convert on a lot of shots. Uh, they did, at, you know, outshoot them on Saturday uh, pretty handily, uh, but still lost that game. And part of the reason is they just couldn't convert on the power play in three opportunities. Yeah. I mean, again, you know, that's going to happen, but it's, it's still not the greatest power play. We know that. No, at least they're no. A little bit. And so, you, you know, you have to have that hope that maybe yeah. it will get better and maybe, you know, guys like Andre are fixing that. Maybe Brink will do a little better. You know, there's that hope. Yeah, I think, again, there's, you know, a weakness in finishing. Yeah. But the puck movement with the with the Phantoms, you know, as opposed to the Flyers, I think the puck movement is there. The smarts are there. Uh, it's just a matter of, of finishing on the play, which, you know, I'm obviously a lot more forgiving with the Phantoms than I am with the Flyers on that front. But, you know, even like looking at how the power play is running, it's it's a lot better on the Phantoms. Not different animal, but still, I just feel like there's like an organization to it and set plays that just might not be there with the Flyers. I think that's a fair assessment. I really do. Um, looking more at some specific guys, uh, Tyson Forster, man, I really think that trip up to the Flyers was such a good boost for him. Mm -hmm. uh, from a confidence perspective. And we, we talked about that uh, when he was playing for the Flyers that, you know, maybe in a perfect world, he would have stayed down with the Phantoms again because of the risk factor to the Phantoms playoff run. Obviously, in hindsight, now that I'm feeling better about the Phantoms, I'm seeing more of the plus side uh, of, of bringing him up. But man, his, his shot is just so fun. Like when he mm -hmm. is on, he is on. Uh, that power play goal he got on Friday was just all him. With, with that shot, uh, a goal and three assists for the weekend. And he still leads the team in points. And he's got 44 points in just 61 games. And, you know, the Phantoms have played 67 games overall to this point. Yeah, no, that's pretty good. It's a rookie season. It's a, it's a solid rookie season. So uh, I still am expecting a little more because that's where I'm hesitant in saying he's definitely going to make the team next year as far as the big club. Let's see what he does in the playoffs if they make the playoffs. Yeah, I think for a guy like him, that's going to be huge, right? And in, in looking at what he can do in a different situation. And uh, one of the between period interviews uh, from the weekend was uh, Artem Anisimov. And 
uh, it was interesting because he talked specifically about getting the rest of the team playoff ready from a mental perspective right? and how that's part of like what he's doing from a leadership perspective is talking to the guys and being like, this is how it's going to be different in the playoffs. And here's how we need to play in these games now so that we're not having to make the leap once that official change takes place, that we have that mentality in these remaining games for the season. Yeah, I think it's great that they actually have someone doing that. I think it's, you know, it's helpful for the young players. He he seems to be really enjoying that. Good for Artem. That's all I can say. Yeah, it's really cool. And and just to hear him talking about, you know, talking to guys like Tyson Forster and Elliot Denoyer and Ollie Lixel and Bobby Brink specifically, who are, the, the you know, those are the guys that need that message yes. the most because they need to show that they can step up for yep. the playoffs. Um, you know, I think that Denoye, especially, you know, he's he kind of been up. There. Yeah, he just had an assist on Friday, but he's somebody that could use a little bit of a, a bump uh, yeah. on his confidence. His goal scoring uh, to slow down for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll pick it back up. Yeah, and but on the flip side, I think Ali Lixel and stable with this. He's now second on the team in scoring, uh, but he's only played 48 games overall uh, relative to some oh, of the other having, guys. He's having a tremendous year. Nobody talks yeah. about him. We're, it seemed, you know, it seems like we're the only ones that talk about him. He's got no chance of making the Flyers, helping the Flyers, but he's having a really good year. Yeah, he had a goal and an, and an assist on Sunday. Um that uh, power play goal too really helped the team in, in that game. I think on Saturday he had um, some really good opportunities. A lot of them were just stopped by the goalie or he had a couple misses on mm -hmm. the net. And so again, just working on his shooting a little bit more uh, over this off season is going to really do him a lot of good. And then Bobby Brink comes in with a two goal game on Friday. He got the game winning goal. Um, and that insurance empty netter at, at the end. And uh, it was a really good play on his uh, regular goal in, in that one as well. Yeah, he's picking it back up slowly. Uh, he definitely needs to um, get on a, on a roll here, though. He's the guy that we're expecting. We'll get that last call up for um, really to help spark the fan base. But, you know, he's got to show a little more before he does that. So they at least could say, hey, look what he's doing, you know play it up a bit. Absolutely. So like I said, the magic number is now seven. Uh, they are in fifth place in the division with five games remaining. And all the teams in the division who are above them have six games remaining. And over the past uh, little bit, Springfield kind of leapfrogged Charlotte into that third place spot. So now Charlotte is the one, is the team that's right above the Phantoms in the standings. They have a two-point margin on the Phantoms right now with that game in hand. And uh, so I think they just really need to keep pace with Charlotte uh, in order to stick in the spot that they are now in that fifth place spot. Um, Hartford is in sixth right below him with the same number of games played as the Phantoms, and they are three points behind the Phantoms. So that's why I'm saying they they should just need to keep pace. And yeah, then if you they look control at their own destiny that way. Exactly. Exactly. And you know, looking at their schedule, lo and behold, on Friday, who are they playing? The Charlotte Checkers, right? And so, you know, again, you, you kind of have to say. Ronnie Adder, if he misses that game, is that going to be a, a huge deal for the Phantoms? Could be, because that pairing he has with Adam Yenning mm -hmm. is really solid. And so to mix that up a, a little bit, uh, it could be a, a big risk, especially because they didn't mix it up in the last several games. Yenning and Adder have been together as a pairing for weeks now. Yeah, it could hurt them. I, I'm you know, not looking forward to that possibly happening. Yeah, on the on the upside, you have Emil Andre paired with Belpedio as the top pairing with Zamula out. So that's good to get Andre in all kinds of situations, and, and that should help. Nope. But nope. yeah. So on Saturday, they're gonna face Springfield. It's just a two-game weekend. So, like those other teams with a game in hand will catch up to them. Then the week after their final week, they face Bridgeport, Charlotte again, and then they finish the season 
against Hershey, which is, uh, you know, this is going to be tough. So with two games against Charlotte, who are right above them in the standings, those are, you know, four point swings right there. Yeah, just keep winning. That's what they have to do. Yep. So uh, I think you know, it's going to be a tall order, but I do think the Phantoms can do it. They just have to really play consistently, play their game, and uh, stay out of the penalty box, I think is Yeah, that's a big thing. The advice. Out of the penalty box will be huge. You're right about that. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, switching gears and talking about the Flyers, they are – facing the St. Louis Blues tonight. We will see Ronnie Adderd in that one on the road, and we will talk about it coming up next. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try a Built Bar. I know my goal has been to eat a little healthier this year, but I don't want to compromise on taste. And if you're like me, Built is just the thing for you. Healthy is actually tasty. And what makes Built Bars so good? Well, they're covered in 100% real chocolate and come in unbelievably delicious flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and coconut almond. On the healthy side, they're only 130 calories and four grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't need to wait around for a box. We've been talking for years about ordering Built Bars at Built.com. You can still do that, but you can also get them at Walmart or Sam's Club. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section and grab a box of Built Bars. You can get a four bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate or coconut puffs. And if you're near Sam's Club, you can run in and grab a 13-bar box of brownie batter and churro. You can thank me later. So, Russ, uh, where do you think they slot in Ronnie Adderd tonight against St. Louis? It's a good question. Um, I think it's going to be on the third pairing. I think it'll be him and Sealer. Yeah, I, I wonder about that. I mean, that's the most logical and will likely happen. Although I'd kind of like to see him in that pairing with Sanheim if Risto is still out. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do that, though. But it would be interesting. I, I'm with you on that. I just don't think they're going to do it. But I'm yeah. with you. You want to see the most. I think, yeah, I think so, too. And I think it also gets the most out of Sanheim, right? Because yeah. I think that it put Sandheim back in that situation where he's covering a little bit. Yeah, uh, but in a way. his offense, though. That's the only thing with Sandheim. Like, every little bit of defense seems to kill his offense. That's the only It is true, but that's what Torts likes, so. Yeah, it's not what Russ likes, because <laughs> you know, Travis Sandheim has more offense than he's he's put in this year. And, you know, if he's the guy who's got to watch out, I don't know. I mean, he literally only has 22 points. I mean, that's pretty disappointing. Yeah, so with the St. Louis Blues, uh, you know, both teams will be coming off a two-game losing streak. Both teams are not going to make the playoffs. Um, Blues just lost in heartbreaking fashion to the Bruins, and that was the Bruins' 60th win of the season, which is just wild. But um, uh, I think that, you know, the Blues have – got you know a few injuries that have been really affecting them as of late not sure what exactly is going to happen since a couple of the guys were day to day but Robert Thomas Pavel Buknevich and Marco Scandella were all day to day in their last game and especially on the D side you know they they had a, an emergency call up of Matthew Kessel from Springfield mm -hmm. who we've seen Quite a bit this season uh, playing the Phantoms. He's really good, and yes, you know, he got yeah. yeah, he's a really good uh, player. So it was, it was good for him personally to get that opportunity for St. Louis, but not sure where that is going to play out in tonight's game. Well, I can tell you that the Blues score goals. I mean, that's the one thing they score a lot more than the Flyers. So uh, depending on who's in net for the Flyers, that could be. Uh, problematic yeah some of the guys you mentioned like Buchnevich and stuff that you know that could hurt them a little bit but they um they do score they're in the middle of the league in scoring you know a lot higher than the Flyers so that's what I still would worry about is that aspect of their game and I think Craig Berube is still not going to want to lose to the Flyers and still wants to finish strong so he has a safe his job is safe 
So I think that's a big thing. You'll probably place you yeah, probably face Binnington and Binnington and Net, who's never easy and you know actually can be quite volatile at times. So mm-hmm. we'll see what happens with that. He could be hitting guys in the back of the, you know, in the back of the, uh, uh, in their back, actually, with the stick. You never know. Yeah, well, he just got that two-game suspension, so that doesn't uh, he may be. <laughs> it really doesn't. Yeah, it, it's a, it's interesting. The, the Blues have a worse penalty kill than the Flyers and more shots against per game than yeah. the Flyers. Uh, but I think the Flyers generally block more of those shots, so that could be affecting those stats in, in terms of the differ, differential. But they're about even in shots for per game. So I think like the opportunities are there going in. That's the difference with the Flyers. Well, exactly, yeah. exactly. That that is the big difference. There is that uh, the the Blues have guys that can finish on their shots a, a little bit better, including that top line: uh, Braden Shen cent- centering uh, Jacob Rana and uh, Brendan Saad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's verana has been hot as a pistol, and you know whatever happened with him in Detroit. We'll never know, but man, he's proven himself again in St. Louis, and he is a terrific offensive player, and he's fast, and he's hard to cover. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a real interesting challenge for the Flyers, especially you know coming again coming off those two losses. Uh, can they put together a more complete game? I think. Uh, you know, even though, you know, Torts did say, like we said on yesterday's show, that he felt really good about the game in Pittsburgh overall from an effort standpoint. I just think, you know, you know I, dotting that I and crossing that T is oh, okay, but, the next but step. Here's my problem with, with, yes, John, the effort's been good. I get it. But you were down 3 nothing for a lot of that game. So, again, yes, there's this little bit of fight back ability with this team. But you were down three nothing for a while. There wasn't, you know, it's not a great effort at that point. But he tends to gloss those things over when they come back and forgets about the two periods that maybe weren't good. You know, I can't disagree with you there in terms of the results not being there. I feel like the tagline for this flyer season is all effort, no execution. Yeah, I like it. Make a shirt. <laughs> but um... I'll buy it. That is where we are. Uh, Our Flyers fun thing for the day is the Phantoms power play goal from Sunday. It was an Ollie Lixel goal, uh, but Tyson Forster did most of the work there. And so I like those two guys working together that well. I like the power play goal uh, and everything about it. Take a look at that highlight. I promise you will like it as well. Good stuff. That. Yeah, that will do it for today's show. We'll be back tomorrow and we will recap uh, this game against St. Louis. Plus, we will have our mailbag and so much more. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got a question for that mailbag, you can tweet us at Lockdown Flyers or you can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen today. Now make your next listen game to game NHL. It's every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. It's on the Locked On NHL feed, anywhere you get your podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.